I'd like to call the sixth meeting of the 2016-2017 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mayor. By working together with everyone contributing what they can, a greater good is achieved. Thank you. Would the clerk please call the roll call? Uh, 14 present. Alderman Schneider is excused. Alderman Bitters is not excused. Pardon me? Excuse me, they're both uh, excused. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Entertain a motion. Um, Thank you, Mayor. I would move to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, there are no mayor appointments this evening. Uh, next, we'll move on to the public forum. City Clerk. Thank you. First on our list this evening is Lorraine Green. Lorraine, if you could come up. those fans turned a little speed down it's very hard to hear back here yeah it's the air conditioners are the air on no. they're off they're off it's that damn that damn they're taking care of it thank you okay we ready uh yeah lorraine could i have your home address please it's 2308 north 35th street thank you and you have five minutes all right thank you very much i'm here tonight to, to speak to you of my observations of the shell game that's being played out in regards to the purchase of the Field of Dreams by Aurora. I'd like to preface this by saying that my remarks are based on figures in the city's own Rettler report. This report is probably close to two years old, and if things go as usual, it's higher cost figures today, and project overruns need to be considered. The Field of Dreams was acquired by the Sheboygan Area School District for the purchase price of $1 from the city of Sheboygan. It was to be um, a school site. That is why we bought the home we did. It was city property to start with, and so the shell game begins. Sheboygan Area School District now owns that land and wants to sell the land to the Aurora Corporation for $2.5 million dollars leaving them with a profit of $2,499,000 oh, $2,499,999. Part of the shell game is what is under the second cup, the Butson property on the south side of our city. The, but the Butson property comes into the plan because the replacement fields are needed at the Butson property to replace the ones that would be destroyed on the Field of Dreams. The DNR has a requirement to meet conditions in a grant that the DNR gave to the Sheboygan Area School District for the development of the Field of Dreams. O Aurora will donate $2.3 million for the development of the Butson property, with the remaining $2.7 million developing yet another piece of property that we now refer to as the East Parcel which also belongs to the Sheboygan Area School District. If and when this East Parcel would ever be sold, and what's to stop it from being sold, as it is uh, property owned by the Sheboygan Area School District, it is not considered a park. Under the definition of a park, it needs to be owned by the city. So if it is ever sold, the school, uh, school district will also make an additional handsome profit the school district comes out $1 shy of $2.5 million for the current field of dreams and will also own a developed piece of property across the street. Now watch the cup. The prize is being transferred. Since the Butson property will, will fall short $2.5 million to compete phase one of the project, someone will be on the hook to come up with the remainder of those monies. This shortfall amount does not include 
The shortfall amount of $2.5 million that is short does not include lighting for the soccer fields. Now this is the promised tournament grade uh, uh, facility that we were promised. It does not include seating, scoreboards, necessities for concession stand, complex, field ma uh, complex or field maintenance during growth, or the annual maintenance fees for the, for the city for five fields. And based on the Sheely Soccer Complex in Appleton, we would estimate that to be $150,000 annually. Since the Butson property is owned by the city, I will assume that the city will be responsible for this underfunded project, as well as the maintenance of that property and the city infrastructure all around all three properties, that being the Butson property, the East Parcel, and the current Field of Dreams. Any, any sort of infrastructure that needs to happen. Remind you, this is just phase one. The football fields on phase two are not even in my consideration here. How does it happen that the Sheboygan Area School District comes out the winner here? If the Sheboygan Area School District thinks this is such a great idea, why don't they give the $2.5 million that they're making from the sale by completing phase one of the Butson project? My guess is that they have it earmarked for other expenditures. We have soccer fields, we have baseball diamonds now. Why are we as a city so anxious to destroy them and assume another debt for all, all for something that this city does not really need right now? Let's take a detour here and consider the second component of this great deal, the Butson property. Who asked for tournament grade fields? The citizens were not asked if they wanted the Field of Dreams destroyed. We were not asked if we wanted tournament grade facility for soccer and football. Personally, I would love to see our city have an outdoor water park, like our neighboring communities of Manitowoc and Excuse Plymouth. Excuse me, Lorraine? Yes. Yes, your five minutes are up. That's five already? I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Next is Susan Sunquist. Susan, can I have your home address, please? 2338 West Shelley Court. Okay, you'll have five minutes. I do not need the five minutes. I just have a couple of points that I would like to ask this council to consider. And Toby talked about some of it. The Butson property was donated to the citizens of Sheboygan. The citizens. Not a private group, not a private soccer group to the citizens, and I think the citizens should have some sort of say in that. My other concern are the responsibilities for the financial cost. Sheboygan just passed a wheel tax because they can't afford to fix the streets, and now they're incurring some significant debt, not only on the outs onset, but in many years to come. It's my understanding that the city doesn't have that kind of money, which is why I was just charged a wheel tax and I've been charged a, a garbage um, tax or amount added onto my taxes. So where will this money come from? I think that question has yet to be answered and I would really like to know what the answer to that is. Thank you very much. Thank you, Susan. And lastly is Herb Tyler. Herb, would you mind coming up? Can I have your home address, please? Sure, uh, 3514 Geely Avenue. And you'll have five minutes. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to forego a lot of what I'd planned to say uh, <clears throat> because it's been covered very well already uh, by Toby Green. And I'm going to tell the Common Council here that you have a fiduciary responsibility to the taxpayers of Sheboygan to get it right. Every level of government has the same problem with projects. They are underestimated when the costs are talked about, and any revenue or benefit is always overestimated, always. You don't have to look any further than the demolition of, of uh, Boston Store to see that, or the Marina Project, uh, which we've poured hundreds of thousands of dollars into because they can't make a go of it uh, as a private, uh, private entity. So it happens over and over and over again. 
and it should not be happening here. The taxpayers have a right to know exactly what's going to be spent. Toby's figures are, are actually wrong in one respect, and I'm going to correct them if I may. She, everything she said is absolutely correct. She just didn't go far enough. If you just take the Rettler report figures, we're t talking $9.4 million to develop the property, of which $2.33 will come from Aurora. That leaves a deficit of $7.1 million that the taxpayers will be on the hook for. That's a, that's a big chunk. That's assuming that you could do it for the cost of the estimate that was given two years ago and assuming that there aren't over, overruns, which, of course, in government projects there always are because we have a bottomless pit called the taxpayer that can pay for it. Uh, if you do this, you're either doing it in a spurious manner, which I doubt. I don't think you're that devious. Uh, or you're doing it out of ignorance, which I kind of think maybe you are. You've got to look at the numbers. Some of you are numbers people. I heard that here a year ago. Look at the numbers and reconsider this. Um, I'm going to end with a notion that you, you have an opportunity to slow this whole process down. And for a couple of years, through a couple of election cycles, this was done between Aurora and the school district, the Field of Dreams deal, in a surreptitious manner behind closed doors at the, at the insistence or request of, of Aurora and done in secret. And the community didn't have a chance to get involved or respond in any way until after the fact, after everything was cut and dried. Um, I would think that being people in government, you would want people involved. The quote for the night said, when working together, a greater good can be achieved. We never had the opportunity to work together. And I'm going to quote Mr. Bellinger. Uh, just a short time ago, he was talking with a gentleman from WHBL. And he was talking about the half a percent county sales tax. He said, it's a bad deal for Sheboygan. Well, so is this project that is being undertaken where they're going to get stuck for millions of dollars that, that people aren't admitting to right now. He said, there's no collaboration with the city. I share your pain, Mr. Bellinger. There's no collaboration with the people who would be directly affected by the Aurora project. And it was rammed down our throats. That's a quote by Mr. Bellinger. I share your pain. I know exactly how you feel. You can correct that. If we had a chance to go through a couple of election cycles and let the voters decide, and believe me, we have a group of people that can mobilize people, and it isn't just a Graceland subdivision uh, issue. It's a Sheboygan issue. I think that we might have a different result. The worst that can happen is it's postponed for a while. It's already been postponed for a year and a half through the efforts of the Save the Field of Dreams group. So what if it got postponed for another two years? The sky's not going to fall. That would be my request, that you rescind the zoning, uh, go, uh, revert to the original zoning, and I don't know if there's a motion before this body to that effect, but I would request that somebody develop that and put this on hold until people in this, in this community have a chance to respond. Thank you. Thank you, Herb. That's it for this evening. Thank you. Next is Mayor's announcements. I'd like to ask that Mike Marver come forward. I'd like to take this time to acknowledge Mike and his 31 years of service to the city of Sheboygan. He started on July 8th of 1985 and retired June 3rd of 2016. Not many people can claim to work for the same establishment for the amount of time that Mike has worked for the city of Sheboygan. This speaks of his personality and his loyalty. Mike has held various positions at DPW, including laborer, truck driver, sanitation operator, cement finisher, and recycling center operator. He, the tasks that, that are completed at DPW frequently become mundane and repetitive. We often forget that what we do directly affects the daily lives of all the citizens that are served by the DPW employees. The countless miles of streets Mike has plowed, the tons of yard waste that he's hauled from the recycling center, and the thousands of yards of concrete that he laid all have a positive and direct effect on the citizens of Sheboygan. I would also like to acknowledge Mike's family and thank them for their sacrifices. It's not easy for a father and a husband to be pulled from the daily responsibilities of raising a family. Many times the citizens of Sheboygan needed Mike during the middle of the night or over the holidays. Unfortunately, we cannot make up that time has, that Mike has missed while providing life-saving services such as clearing and salting the roadways. The Department of Public Works and the City of Sheboygan are extremely grateful that the Marver family was able to spare Mike when the citizens really needed his services. On behalf of the City of Sheboygan, the Department of Public Works, and me personally, I'd like to wish Mike all the best in retirement 
We hope it's a long and happy one. And I'd like to present him with a certificate of appreciation from the city of Sheboygan. We're honored to present Michael Marver, the certificate of appreciation and recognition for 31 years of dedicated services from July of 1985 through June of 2016. Mike, congratulations. <laughs> Next, I'd uh, like to ask Jean, ask Jean Bynaman to come forward. Jean Bynaman, an RN, will be retiring from the Sheboygan County Health and Human Services Department on July 5th of 2016, where she's been employed as a public health program supervisor since the city-county health department merger in 1987. She was hired by the city of Sheboygan as a public health nurse and then the the Sheboygan Public Nursing Supervisor in August of 1980, where she served until the merger took place. She served the city of Sheboygan and surrounding communities for 36 years. Jean's skills were put to a specific test a few years ago when Sheboygan suffered an outbreak of tuber tuberculosis. There were 11 cases of TB that had to be treated and Jean coordinated and was a leader of the team that uh, coordinated the local efforts with all the state and federal help. Jean, thanks for all your work that you did to benefit the citizens of Sheboygan, and I'd like to present you the certificate of recognition by the city of Sheboygan to Jean Bynaman. The certificate of recognition is in appreciation of your dedicated service as a city of Sheboygan public health nurse from 1980 to 87 and continued service as a Sheboygan County public health program supervisor for 36 years of dedicated service. Jean, thank you very much. What a blessing the last 36 years have been. I'm so thankful that in the summer of 1980, when I came to this building to apply for a job, um, that I was hired. And who would have thought that we would have experienced a, a leading Legionnaires outbreak, a leading tuberculosis outbreak, that our community would have become so diverse um, with refugees from all over the world, and the great things that have happened to date. And I guess as elected officials, I challenge you all to continue to support the funding that's take to, that is needed for all of us to work together and really make Sheboygan the shining star that it is. So thank you so much for your service, and I look forward to seeing you in the future. I'll maybe attend more board meetings or council meetings. I don't know. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is a, a proclamation. Um, this Saturday, the Town and Country Garden Club is celebrating the 50th anniversary of the dedication of Indian Mound Park. I'd like to ask that Mary Lee Hansman, the president of the Town and Country Garden Club, and Tippy Young, the chairman of the club's Indian Mound Park Committee, please join me at the podium to receive this proclamation to commemorate this event. Proclamation, whereas the city Whereas Indian Mound Park, a natural historic resources, is a sacred burial ground of effigy mound people, and whereas with in these 15 acres of adjacent woodland and winding stream lie 18 rare Indian burial mounds dated about 500 to 1000 AD, and whereas this effigy mound culture was limited mo almost entirely to southern Wisconsin with a few mounds in Iowa, Illinois, and Minnesota, and whereas all that is known of Indian Mound culture comes from the archaeological study of such mounds. And whereas these mounds are saved from destruction by the Sheboygan Area Garden Clubs through public subscription and given to the city of Sheboygan as an archaeological park. And whereas the Town and Country Garden Club has continued its commitment to Indian Mound Park and has kept the park one of its ongoing civic projects, working closely with the Sheboygan Park Department on the maintenance and preservation. And whereas the mounds were restored and opened to the public on June 25th of 1966, dedicated to those oldest peoples of Wisconsin whose love for their homeland kept it green and beautiful and rich in nature's bounty. May we learn to preserve it half as well. I now therefore, Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim June 25th of 2016 as Indian Mound Park Day to honor the 50th anniversary of the dedication of Indian Mound Park, and I urge all citizens to continue to support and preserve this important part of Wisconsin's rich er Indian heritage. And uh, City of 
appreciates all the work that the Garden Club has done over the years, not only to start this park out, but also continually maintain it in the future. Would you like to say a few words? Uh, I'm Mary Lee Hansman, the current president of Town and Country, and on behalf of the, our Garden Club, we thank you for this proclamation. And I want to invite all of you this Saturday at 2 o'clock to come down to Indian Mound Park. We're going to have a small program with some dignitaries speaking, and then we're going to have a docent-led tour of Indian Mounds. So <coughs> hope to see you there. I'd like to ask Kate Redeker to come forward. Kate, Miss Wisconsin USA, recently returned from the U Miss USA pageant in Las Vegas. Kate was selected as Miss Photogenic, and you can see why. We're very, very proud of Kate, and it's great to have a locally representative win the Miss Wisconsin USA crown and compete in this nationwide pageant. Kate is the daughter of Tricia and Steve Redeker. She's a psychology major at UWM. She volunteers for organizations that she's passionate about, including the USO, the Susan G. Komen for the Cure, and the Na National MS Society. Kate is the first Sheboygan woman to be selected as Miss Wisconsin USA in the pageant's 65-year history. In 2017, Miss Wisconsin pageant is set for September 11th in Fond du Lac when she'll be passing her crown on to a new uh, person to serve in that role. Kate, it's good to see a Sheboygan girl find the success that you had in the Miss Wisconsin USA contest, and you did a great job of representing Wisconsin in the Miss USA pageant. As mayor, I'd like to present you as a symbolic key to the city in recognition of your accomplishments and best wishes for your future. <coughs> to thank you all for this amazing uh, present, I guess. Um, it has been such an honor the past nine months to represent Sheboygan, which I'm proud to be from. Um, and thank you guys for all that you do to make it the great place that it is. Next, we'll move on to some hearings. Um, I, we have hearings um, items 2.1 through 2.5. Is there anyone here to be heard on any of those hearings? David? Which uh, hearing uh, did you want to respond to? Which street? 2.5, uh, repaving the street from, um, from 9th Street, from Indiana, 9th Street to Georgia Avenue. All right, very good. Go ahead, David. All right, now, just want to take a little bit back here. Now, <coughs> it's been said to me by some of the people in this here that uh, what have I given to this city? Well, let me tell you something that I have <coughs> given to this city. But they... What you guys want to do is to repave that road in front of me, and because I have asked a little bit on this, on um, anyway, asked on this on all that we've already put forward towards this road, um, they said it was said, Dave, this city's given you so much. This is what I have given this city already. I gave up my bar on Seventh and Penn. You guys use it now for a parking lot for. Prairie State Insurance Company. I gave up my parking that was on the street on Indiana Avenue when you did the bridge and the circle project. You put the parking lot a whole block away from me on the other side of four of a kind, but I always persevere. Um, and when it comes to the land across the street from me now where Sprecher is, I uh, made a deal way back in 89 with Bill Rice, Cole, and Bill Rice himself to make that a parking lot. And I did so, I had the water line secured and uh, whatever else was there anyway, leveled off and made into a <coughs> parking lot. Paid for all of that out of pocket myself, plus paid the insurance and had him a copy of my insurance every year sent to him to make sure that was always paid. Now, when the city wanted that, they made me a, a few promises, and uh, there's one person in this room that was personally made that promise to me 
that that parking parking on that land would never be taken away from me. Now it's real close right now to say whether or not that parking's been taken away from me. But I have built my parking lot across the street, which the city made that deal with me. If they ever would take that parking away from me, that they would tear down my buildings, which I did, um, which would be bike and ski. Um, back then was RLO. Um, then there was a, a residential house in there, plus what other properties were there, and I made that a parking lot. Um, out of my pocket, so you're talking probably between $350,000 and $500,000 that I paid for that out of my own. So just saying. Now, then you come along and you take your time at doing Indiana up to 9th Street, just pounding the heck out of my building, which I fixed every time, and uh, pounding the heck out of my sidewalks, which you came in and did it and took a bunch of the bricks off the front of my building, which I had to put back on, and uh, out of my pocket. Now, when uh, we asked, because of those trucks running through our alleys and on our road there, that you said, well, it was covered by a block grant, a TIF grant, it would be taken care of when the rest of that construction was done. You guys broke the alley right in half down the middle, all them big heavy trucks going down there. Now, when I get done with this, I'll tell you about a squeaky wheel getting greased because we kind of quit complaining about it as time goes by. Well, when it was the bridge project and then A Street to 9th Street and then the gas station had that big plumage there, so you put us back on that where all the fuel had leaked into the street and followed the gas pipes and sewer pipes right to my building. I mean, they tore them up right to my place, replaced the corner by me twice on the sidewalk there. And um, in fact, they took the one of those big trucks, drove over the corner and just broke the end of it right off, which you guys came back and took care of. I'm glad of that. Um, <coughs> then you did the, then when we asked about having the road fixed then or the alley fixed then, it was moved back because the 9th Street had to get, fi um, sorry, Indiana had to, do, had to be fixed from 9th Street to Back then was 14th Street, and then you did from, and you did all of 14th Street, and then the rest of Indiana Avenue West. So all of that we kept getting put back, get put back. Well, in the middle of that, the Heineke building, which was a sausage building, was going to be made into the Broad House, and the parking area was going to be put behind the alley. So the alley was going to be redone then, which of course was dropped, and they didn't do that, and nor did they do our alley. Um, but with all of this, we've always suffered through the road that we have. Now, that road was a pretty good road when I moved there, and I moved there back in the 80s. Now, I thought it was redone before that. I was talking with my neighbors here, and one of them couldn't tell me the exact date on it. Do you guys, any of you guys know? Uh, Dave Beeble? Chad, is he here? Does anybody know when that road was put in there? Just being in all fairness. Now, I thought it was put in in the late 80s, but I was told it might have been put in before that. It was late 80s? Early 80s. All right, thank you. So I knew it was there because I thought it appeared on my tax bill when I bought the place in 88 that it was still paying us. So maybe it was 83. I think it holds out for five years that, you, that we pay for that. Does that sound right? So anyway, of all of that, I uh, just going through all of that. Now, a normal residential pays about $800 a year. We have 2,500 residentials in this city. And... Uh, I'm kind of guessing on a business thing, you can only break it down from what you say the percentage is from what we pay for our schools, which I don't have any kids, or never had any kids, but maybe yet, um, to maybe, I just kind of a guess at $2,400 on businesses, depending my, like mine. I'm trying to, trying to guess that, but I'm guessing that's what I've already paid for our road. Now, if you paid that over, say, from 88 till now, you know, we're talking two to $300,000 that have been already paid for that plus whatever I had to pay for that that was left on my tax bill from the original time that it was. Now I have about 35 feet that is, that has to be, we'll say it's 40 feet, but I replaced about five or six feet of it a few years back when I put a storm sewer in my parking lot, went to the city and I asked one of the guys from the city to drop me off a storm sewer. Because when they put Indiana Avenue in, the water ran backwards, backwards to the south towards <laughs> our alley and put a, made it in the wintertime just a big skating rink. It was impossible to drive there. So after I put that in there, it, all of that water went down into that storm drain, which worked out pretty good. So it's probably saved a couple of years on that road for my block. But uh, those are things that I've always been proactive on in taking care of this. Now, during that time that they did the A Street Bridge, the Circle, back in the middle 90s, then East, 
then 8th Street to 9th Street on Indiana Avenue, and then of course 9th Street to um, 14th Street. They also put Longfellow School in there. So that new road they had put in there <coughs> got all cut up to secure the water lines, the sewer lines, and the gas lines. So they cut up that road and patched it all up, not very well, and they've been patching it up every year. You know, I shouldn't say that. They patch it up as well as can be. I mean, with our, with our winters and stuff like that, how can a patch hold around here, you know? So, but they did take and cut up a new road and did what they did. So in all of that time, we've lived with that road the way it is, our alley the way that it is. I do the plowing on that. I have the skidders. So to plow it with a truck with a plow is really hard because it's so uneven. But those big trucks, when they did that, just busted the heck out of that thing. And all of the complaints that we had for it always got pushed on, you know. And after a while, like I said, that thing about a squeaky wheel and getting greased, I quit complaining about it, which I can't believe because I normally let you guys know. Um, but my neighbors also, the same thing. Nobody had been complaining about it for quite a while. And there, were, every person on my block, except for the gas station across the street from me, is now retired. Some are in their 80s, some are well into their 60s, some are just into their 60s. But either way, you're, you're charging $23 a foot for residential, which I look at that and I say, well, that's not too bad, but they still have paid for it over the last few years, and you cut that road up, tearing all them houses down and running all them trucks through there a long time ago. Um, and for me, you're charging me $100 a foot on a piece of property that I asked you to annex to my bar, and you haven't and you won't. And now you're going to say, well, I have 44 feet there. Want to charge me? I'm guessing it's going to end up around $5,000 when it's done. And it's not a commercial property. It's still listed. It's on my parking lot, however you guys deem that. But from $94 plus dollars a foot to $23 a foot is a big change. What I'm saying here is that with all of this, with all of this, I don't know if you guys realize, but Wisconsin is the seventh highest ranked taxed state in all the union. Now, I tried finding a newer one to see if that was different. The city of Sheboygan ranks between 12th and 18th of the highest taxed cities in Wisconsin. There's 200 cities in this state. There's 2,500 cities and towns in this state. And all of that, and all of the taxes that I pay, because in my business it's like 95% taxes, drives me crazy. We put billions of dollars within the system just in Wisconsin. We are the 123rd safest city in this state, which is terrible considering we're the 10th safest city in the country only a number of years back. And now you're going to have the police hand out these tax bills. I'm just going to call them a tax bill because this is not cool. On my block especially, we should get a pass on this. We've had to live <coughs> with this. We lived with all of the stuff that you guys wanted to do to this city. When I moved there, it was nothing but heavy industry. You had everything from rice coal across the street from either original old building. I guess there was a Rexall there, but that was Heineke Meats, which had just closed up. Um, cold, cold storage, rice coal across the street, tannery, Lakeland Coats, uh, Madewell Chairs, Arway Chairs and Furniture, Rockline, Sheboygan Machine Shop was right on the bridge. Sheboygan Screw and another chair company that was there. That was pretty heavy industry, you know, back in the 80s and early 90s. So when I, put a, when I chose to move there with my tavern, I was not moving into a residential area. I was moving into an area that was for my type of business. So I won't have anybody tell me that I didn't give to this city because I gave. I gave everything I can. I've been here. I've been my business. I've been in it now. I've owned it for 30 years within my business within this city. So it's, it's been a family business for 42 years now. And uh, just saying, we've paid for this thing three times over. We should get a pass on this. Um, it was, I, you know, I can say, what about the land over by the old press? How much did they pay for it? I can tell you, but I won't do that out loud. Um, I can probably pull out half a dozen other ones that went through that same thing. And if any of us have suffered more through, your, through this city's Things. I mean, we were covered under a block grant. We were covered within a TIF grant to have this all done. It should be taken care of. Okay. Thank you for those comments, David. May I, uh, can I ask for a vote to get a pass on this or to get a lowered rate within our... This will be coming up later in the agenda for a vote. Okay, can I this is your opportunity to, uh, to you know, give us your comments. Can I waive my time to 
the remainder of my time to come up then, if needed. There won't be any opportunity for citizen input at that time unless uh, somebody from the floor would open that for you. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to be heard for any of the five hearings? Is, please step forward. Your name, sir, and the item that you're talking about? Uh, my name is Kerry Doyle. I live at 2522 South <coughs> Street. Which street? Nervous, so. Wh which street? Excuse me? Which street? Sophomore. Which what? Street. Oh, which? 2.1? Two, two so Thank you very much. Street. Please proceed. Uh, my, uh, I have a lot of issues with... Uh, the assessment we got, it's about $7,000 for our lot. It's a uh, 30 by 150 foot lot with a 900 square foot house on it. Uh, we bought it last October. Um, we bought it from HUD. It's a distressed uninhabitable property because of a variety of issues. This is our, I think our ninth, my wife Marcia and I have bought uh, eighth or ninth property we've bought in the last eight years in the city of Sheboygan. Uh, our motto, excuse me a second, <laughs> just so lightheaded here for a second. Um, we, you know, we've, we've kind of had our motto of, you know, we're trying to make Sheboygan a better place to live one house at a time. So each year we've bought a property and we've renovated it and, uh, uh, you know, uh, make them highly efficient, uh, in good condition and try to find people that can rent from us. We don't resell anything. We, we rent them out and we're trying to build some kind of a retirement income. So uh, we've had pretty good success with that. Uh, we're still running at about a break even with all of our, our efforts. I've worked with uh, the building inspectors extensively and Steve Sokolowski, I believe his name is, yes. and the planning because like one property we bought had two lots and we had to join them together for tax purposes and for uh, variances on garages that were there for the last 40 years and all that. So we've we had a good relationship and we've, we've been able to talk with the people in the city and, and, and work on getting things done. When I came to buy this property, uh, it was highly distressed. It had uh, a lot of issues and uh, <coughs> very expensive issues to fix, but we decided to take this one on. But I did my homework on it. Uh, we got it from HUD, so HUD doesn't take any responsibility going forward, so I have to do my homework on it if there's any major problems. And a lot of things did come up. It had some uh, a water issue. We had to uh, put in a new water line and uh, meter and, 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 and that stuff, which uh, was a $7,000 bill. But we were aware of that prior to buying this property last October, uh, as well as... Uh, a foundation issue that we've had fixed that was a $5,000 bill and uh, a staircase that needs to be installed and several other things. Uh, Ryan, the uh, city engineer, has been to this house. I've showed him some of the things I'm talking about. We do a pretty nice job of making these places A1, highly efficient, uh, you know, upgrade furnaces and, and fully insulated and rewired and all the things that's needed to make them really nice properties. And we put a lot of money into them. And, Eight properties, I don't know how much we got into all these, but it's a lot. But to say the least, I was shocked to get a $7,000 notice <laughs> on this house. <coughs> I mean, I did all the checking in October. There was no such thing on the radar. I, I talked to Ryan about this, and he told me that it didn't come up till December. Um, you know, I, we're, I don't know how I recover from this. I mean, we're, we're budgeted on this property to the limit. It's, it's six months to a year of my labor and, you know, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 of our money uh, to, to make this another nice property in the city of Sheboygan. And this $7,000 bill is, is uh, disastrous for us financially for, for this property and us overall. I just don't have that kind of money laying around. I understand they're offering some kind of finance and stuff, but a further argument of this would be half of this bill is for curb and gutter that was put in 40 years ago and it's it's destroyed and it is destroyed it's gone it's it, it's damaged i mean uh, 
I don't feel or see how one be, having bought this property last October, um, you know, I, I count the cars on that street and it's probably a, a traffic of a thousand cars, maybe more per day. Maybe I'm off by a lot, I don't know. But over the 40 years, it took some 12 million vehicle trips up and down that street to ruin that curbing. The bus drives up on that curbing all the time. That's primarily why it's so badly damaged because it's a bus stop out there. Uh, bus drive pulls over there and the snow plows plow it for them, so it gets pretty beat up. But 12 million cars, buses, trucks, semis, there's a factory down the street, so there's semis up and down that road all the time <coughs> to destroy that, that curb and gutter. And, you know, that's $3,500 to us, and we've owned this property for six months, a little bit over. I don't think that's right. I don't think it's ethical. I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's reasonable. I, I, you know, in, in my world, uh, we try to be good citizens, you know. Uh, see, Mary Lynn was on the school board after I got off, but, you know, I've been active in this city for most of my life. You know, I'm a, you know, my wife and I have tried to do the things that are right in life. You know, I did two combat tours in Vietnam. We came home and raised five kids. They all got them through the university. They're all doctors and lawyers uh, doing well, and we're very, very blessed. We have 11 grandchildren, and uh, one thing out of that whole 45 years was we didn't have any retirement. So this is what we did to try to build up some kind of a, a, an income from rental properties. And like I said, you know, we've got a few of them now in Sheboygan, and We've worked really hard, and I have to put a lot of work and time and money into this property yet, and a $7,000 hit is significant. And uh, I guess I would ask for some kind of consideration on this, and I, I don't even know where to begin on that because I'm totally unfamiliar with this statute that allows you guys to do this. Uh, it's, uh, it's financially disastrous to us at this point, and I don't think it's reasonable or fair or, or justifiable uh, having... You know, if, if I hadn't done the, just, you know, the, the diligence beforehand, if I hadn't gone and checked with Steve and, 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 and the, uh, the city or something, I could say maybe, maybe I have some shared responsibility, but I did all of that. You know, I negotiated the price to buy this property based on all of the information of what was available last October, and that's where we came up with the price that we paid for this because we knew we had to put a lot of money into it. This is a $7,000 hit that I, I have no way to reconcile or recover. I can't work my way out of this. I can't, you know, you can't get more rent. You know, I mean, the, the rent basis is, is figured at, you know, the $800 to $850 per month that you can get for a small, you know, two-bedroom house. It's, you know, it's, even when they're really nice, you know, maybe some people get 1000 bucks a month or something for them, but we typically don't uh, in the older neighborhoods. So that's my story, and that's what I'm here for, and I'm hoping that... Uh, Someplace along the line, you folks will take a good hard look at this. I would just like some consideration on it. I think uh, we're getting clobbered here, and I don't think it's justifiable <coughs> at the extent we're getting clobbered. So thank you. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Doyle. Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard? Please step forward. Name, address, and the property or yes, the street uh, here. Cooper Dyke. I'm from Cedarburg, Wisconsin. Have property up here in Sheboygan, and I'm here for 2.4. Um, I think just more maybe a suggestion. Uh, when you get into these a little bit like the previous speaker, it's a little bit of a surprise not knowing I have properties in other municipalities, and this is kind of a shock where <coughs> all of a sudden these fees kind of come out. I think it would be really prudent if you guys had like a website where you could actually explain the fees that we could possibly be hit for, you know, when you buy a property, what we're actually, you know, responsible for. Um, Milwaukee, you don't have to pay for curbs or anything like that. You'll have to pay for your approach, but you don't have to pay for curbs. So that type of thing is a little bit of a surprise. Some of the other places I have it, you don't have that type of thing. They'll grind everything down and you don't get a tax or an additional tax on top of your taxes. So if there was a website or if there was some sort <coughs> of um, place on the Sheboygan website that said, if you buy property here, these are the things that you could be responsible for, and these are the additional fees that you may have coming forward uh, that we, we assess. So it is kind of a surprise. Like the previous speaker, it is a bit of a shock when all of a sudden you hear that this type of thing is going to happen. 
Uh, and then, uh, you know, I, I've got pictures. Of, this is probably not the forum to talk about it. Maybe I need to talk to the city engineer. But when I look at the curves, and I have only owned property here for a short period of time, according to my neighbor, and I'm not going to say exactly, he told me that they were recently done. I don't know what recently means. That's relative. It could have been five years ago, maybe 10. But the curves look really great. So, you know, in other municipalities where I have property, they come in, they grind down the road. It sounds like they're resurfacing. I can even see green laterals, the brand new green lateral, uh, which I would think be overflow pipes for rain sewer or something like that. But anyway, they look brand new, or they look fairly new. So obviously the work's recently been done. And then along the curb, if you're looking at it, you can see where the, the dirt wasn't backfilled. You know, it wasn't recently backfilled, so <laughs> it's still kind of a hollow behind there. So the question that I have is, not only should something be put on a website so that you have an idea of what's coming or could be coming, but secondly, it looks like some of these things have already been done and are we going to be paying for this twice? According to my neighbor, we're paying for this twice. So I don't know if that has to happen or not. The, the curves look great here. Uh, there is one house I do have where they don't look great. They're beat up. And to the previous speaker's point, you have, if you just own the house and you're paying for 40 years worth of damage, it's another thing. But I'm wondering if we're redoing things a little bit too much. I mean, I'd be happy to leave the pictures with you. Maybe this isn't the forum. Maybe it needs to go to... City the city engineer is in the back of the room in middle, so you could leave that with him. Okay. All right. And just a question. I don't know. <laughs> the, 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 the last question would be, um, you know, if, if this has been recently done, how many times do we have to do it again? That's, you know, can we be expected to have to pay for it again? Is there, you know, a 10-year, 5-year, 15-year? When do we have to pay these uh, fees again? That's It would just be nice to know, I think, maybe a little bit more communication as to what you guys do as a municipality and what people need to be aware of as far as fees. That would be a good heads up. So, Okay, thank thank, you. thanks for your comments and appreciate your suggestion. Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Please come forward. Hi, my name is Jake Scher. I'm uh, 1605 South 17th Street, item 2.1. Uh, I guess maybe this has already been discussed, so if I'm beating the same horse that's already been beaten, I apologize. But uh, I guess my big question is when I got this bill, um, and all the other people here who are also kind of for the same issue are a little concerned. I mean, you know, you kind of take a look at all the areas around here that we're middle class, work, hardworking citizens. Mine's not a terribly huge amount compared to some of the other guys that have spoken. Um, but it's still a huge hit for me. I've got a one and a half year old at home, uh, recently married, uh, trying to make things work. Um, and all of a sudden we get a $2,500 assessment um, on a road that quite honestly, South 17th Street is one of the more heavily driven on roads in the city. Um, on the south side there, people come flying by there 40, 45 miles an hour all the time, but we call and complain about speed, but we don't ever get anybody coming and keeping an eye on that stuff we have to worry about. Now I have to worry about my one and a half year old running around playing in our yard, making sure that that stuff's taken care of, but like, that's a whole separate issue. But it's just kind of frustrating when you come in and I've been there for a little over two and a half years now, so uh, I guess I didn't anticipate anything like this. I'm This is my first home, so this is kind of a, a shock to me when you expect something like this. Um, but. The questions I do have is what is the complete scope? I mean, in my letter here it says that I'm responsible for my portion of the property. So it says I got 45 lineal feet of resurfacing of the asphalt and 45 feet of the curb and gutter. So I guess if the, maybe this is also not the right form, but I guess if someone can just explain to me what exactly the resurfacing is that is gonna be done. Like I know that there was some stuff done on 8th Street, just north of Michigan Avenue. There was also some resurfacing done on, U on Union Avenue, just west of uh, Business Drive. Just last fall, it's already tearing up. Um, I don't want to pay $2,000 for this, and this stuff is poorly done, and then all of a sudden, a year from now, you guys are back here creating traffic issues for us again, and potentially throwing more costs at us. Um, I also am taking a look at the curb in front of my house, as the last gentleman had said. Um, the curb in front of my house is perfectly fine. Um, there were no cracks prior to a month and a half ago. Um, 
Unfortunately, I didn't take pictures before you guys started, but there are now cracks. Um, I've since taken pictures because there's also been two additional cracks in the sidewalk. So I guess it's kind of frustrating if we're going to then be charged and held responsible for that, even though there is all the heavy equipment, big heavy trucks, things like that that are out there now causing additional damage. Um, I know that that's kind of the nature of the beast, but that's uh, a little frustrating. Um, I, I guess, is there someone out there that can kind of explain, is it actually, you know, we're only responsible for the curb and gutter where necessary, so if the c curb and gutter is in good condition, it's just an assessment saying that this is your property line, you are potentially going to be charged up to this amount, is that kind of how it's to be read? And the, then the, they're nodding in the back, I yep, think that's yep. true. And then the, the resurfacing, is it going to be a complete demolition of the existing asphalt rather than what they did on like Union Avenue and South It'll East It'll be Street. what we call a mill and fill where we'll grind off the current asphalt, bring it down to a level where there's usually concrete, and then we'll add new asphalt to it. Okay. So, it's so it'll be a, a different process. Perfect. Okay. That was just an, a secondary question I had. So thank you, all three of you, for explaining. Um, that kind of clears my questions. Um, thanks for your time. All right. Thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? <laughs> Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I would move to close the hearings. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of closing the hearings, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to consent agenda. That'll include items 3.2 through 3.22. <laughs> Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I would move to accept and file all reports of uh, officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Uh, the consent agenda is before us. Are there any uh, items to be discussed in that consent agenda? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll for passage? Fourteen eyes. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to uh, reports of officers. Uh, item four point one will lie over till July fifth. Items four point through through four point nine will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, 5.1 is a resolution by Alderman Wolf authorizing the city of Sheboygan to enter into a contract for information technology contractor services. Alderman. Donahue. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, as an initial matter, I would move to suspend the rules. Second. Is there any objection to suspension? Alderman Bellinger. I don't object to the suspension. I would just like to know why we're suspending. It seems like it's a pretty innocuous thing. I'm just wondering why we're suspending. Uh, we have a person in the IT department that's going off to serve in the military, and we need to um, get this new person hired or this contract executed so that they can fill in and have a little bit of time, probably maybe a part of a week, to work with that person before she uh, leaves for her military service. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, okay. Um, there, there's no objection to suspension. Um, please you, Mayor, proceed. I, I would... Uh, Move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The resolution is before us. Is there any discussion? Alderman Wolf. I'd like to uh, make a motion to amend the city staff to uh, review and approve the contract language. I'd like to add that. Second. Thank you for that amendment. Is there any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor, Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I, I just would like to know what the intent of this is. Alderman Wolf, would you like to expand on that? Sure. The, the, the intent is that um, we are in the process of having multiple bids reviewed, and in order to do that, we, we have to review both of the, the <coughs> contracts and allow the, the, uh, the group to actually approve it. 
are we going to pass this resolution? Are we going to hold it? Or what, what are we doing? The intent is to pass it tonight pass with it. the amendment. Pass the authority. Before we, before it's reviewed? What are, the, the staff would review the, the contract. Would, would review the actual contract um, to fill the position with the contractual person. Is that answered for you? It seems like there's two. <coughs> it, it seems like we don't know what we're going to pass. It seems like they're, like they're going to be reviewed, and we don't have. Go ahead, City Attorney. So the, the issue uh, relates primarily to the contract. There are th three. There were three different um, potential companies that we'd be using to fill this. Each of them has a very different contract. Uh, the person who was chosen, our office didn't get the contract until Friday afternoon because it takes a little bit of time. You want to do your due diligence, make sure you're hiring the right person. And uh, we've looked at the contract, but there are some issues with it uh, that we've identified, and we want to make sure that those issues get resolved before we actually sign the document. So the intent here primarily is for you to approve the action of hiring this person and signing a contract, but we don't want you to actually approve, a well, you don't even have a contract in front of you. The city attorney's office would like to actually review the contract and make sure we're not signing something crazy. Uh, and so that's really the intent here, is to give us the opportunity to review this uh, without necessarily having to come back when it would be too late uh, to get this person in on time. Would it, would it be feasible um, with the, uh, the, the timeline to hold this and do a direct referral once, we have, once it's been reviewed? The council would still need to approve it, though, in, in two weeks. And the issue that you've got is that by the time two weeks has passed, we need to have this person on board. At least that's my understanding of it. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, when I read over this document today, I see that the, uh, the fee cannot exceed $45,000. Uh, city Attorney, in that, in that document that you're reviewing, that contract, is the $45,000 going to just include services rendered? Or is there, you know, for, I saw one of the firms was from Appleton. Are we going to be paying portal to, portal to portal for this person to come down from Appleton and work and then go back? Is that going to be part of the $45,000? Is it just going to be services rendered? Thank you. Yeah, I, have, I have actually, I was not the one who reviewed the contract uh, this morning. Uh, Attorney Simon uh, did so. So I'm not sure of that answer. I don't know if uh, our IT director has that particular information. Uh, however, I would note that the resolution does put that uh, cap of uh, $45,000 on there. Um, so, it, you know, it's services, it, it says enter into a contract for IT services for seven period for a cost not to exceed 45000 So I interpret that, that the council's intent would be that the entire cost is no more than forty five. It's also my understanding that we maybe even will be able to do better than that. Alderman Bourne. If I could just follow up, is it, a, is it unusual in a contract like this when we have a third party coming in to provide service that are we just usually paying for services or are we also sometimes paying for travel time and that type of thing to and from? It would be laid out uh, in, in the contract exactly how, you know, what we're paying for and how, but you're still going to have a, a total. I'd like to ask IT Director David Augustine to come up and explain that point a little further. Go ahead. Okay. What the agreement's going to involve is substituting our current employee that we have going on military leave. So it is going to be services that is, are done for us in that role of what the person has now. It does not include, nor will there be any 
cost of travel time between their designated location and here and back. It's just purely what are the fees for the hourly rate based on the hours they spend here. And it's based on a 40 hour work week, no overtime or anything like that. And we do have it down to one vendor with a candidate. It's actually tech systems on one of the ones that you have and that's at an hourly rate of $35 an hour is what it's gonna be. So I, I've been in communication with that group. They know we have to rework the language so it's happy on both sides. And as attorney Rose Simon and attorney Adams, excuse me, I had a little bit of a thing there. Um, we know those, those have to be tweaked for the right language so if both sides are happy, but it's pretty much standard across um, what other businesses do. Rather than going through, because of the military leave, the job has to be open when she comes off of leave, so we can't really hire anybody as a full-time employee. So that's why we're taking this approach. Okay, Alderman Donahue. Uh, my question has been answered, thank you. Okay, is there any other discussion on the motion? or the amendment, I'm sorry. Okay, all those, can you? All those in favor, yeah. All those in favor of the amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the amendment passes. And when the, is there any other discussion on the main motion as amended? Seeing none, then will the clerk please call the roll. Twelve eyes, two no's. Motion passes. Items 5.3 through, through 5.5 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, 6.1 is an RC by finance, to whom was referred number 30 of 1617 by Alder Person Schneider, providing for the sale of approximately 2,740,000 in general obligation refunding bonds series. 2016C and recommends passing the resolution. Alderman Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I would move to adopt, accept, and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Thirteen eyes, one no. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is an RC by Committee of the Whole to whom is referred resolution number 28 of 1617 by Alderman Bellinger to oppose the county proposed sales tax increase and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderman Heideman. Um, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I make a motion to accept and adopt the, and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.3 is an RC by the Committee of the Whole to whom is referred RC number 16 of 1617 by the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee who reviewed and approved the goals and parameters for the City Administrator's 2017 <coughs> Executive Budget as identified by the City Administrator and recommends that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Alderman Heideman. Yes. Again, I uh, make a motion to accept and adopt this resolution. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm gonna vote yes on this tonight with the understanding that we are still going to have the discussion at a future date at the Committee of the Whole regarding renewing the garbage fee. My understanding correct that we're gonna be doing that? That was my understanding after we... Yeah, that meeting has been pushed off till the latter part of July. 
Okay, so that'll, Is that correct, that'll Alderman be, Heidemann? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Sir. And then after that, <clears throat> the council will be taking a final vote on whether we are going to extend the garbage fee after that discussion. Is that correct? Correct. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Moving on to ordinances, items 7.1 through 7.3 will be referred to various committees. Under matters laid over, 8.1 is resolution number 22 of 1617 by Alderman Drawn and Rob, confirming the exercise of police power and making assessments for those benefited properties against which assessments are proposed for resurfacing Salmon Avenue from Calumet to North 21st Street. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I would move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, uh, Alderman Donahue. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, in all the years that I've been on the council, I think this is one of the first times that we've actually had people show up and, and complain. I just want to say, from my perspective, it has always been my position <coughs> that special assessments for roads are deeply unfair and 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 you know I it's it's my my motto it's not fair um, particularly I see I can see why people would need to pay for their sidewalks to be fixed because we assume responsibility for our sidewalks and so forth we don't assume responsibility for plowing the streets people who live <coughs> on streets that are busier tend to get um, higher assessments and uh, be financially indisposed because of these special assessments. But here's the deal. You know, it's <coughs> like if we don't have a chicken, there's no egg. Um, these special assessment funds provide a pretty vital part of our road repair budget. Now, I remember when I was first on the council and really began to understand how special assessments work, talking to Jim Amodio about it and saying, isn't there a better way of doing this? What, you know, th this just isn't fair. People who own a longer uh, piece of property, have more lineal feet, end up paying more money. And the shock when you open that, I remember my folks on North 4th Street, you know, who lived on a limited income, I remember the shock they had when they opened the, the ass special assessment letter and learned that they had to pay X thousands of dollars and they could do it over three years, although the finance rate was relatively high. But the plain fact is, is what do we do without the money? And I think that's the challenge for the city is to try to figure out what we do <laughs> to make this fairer, a fairer process. Right now, we can't make these repairs if we don't have these special assessments. I mean, that's just, that's just the fact of it. There is no money that would be available. There would not be enough money available to make these repairs. So while I sympathize with our speakers here today, and I think they bring up exceedingly valid points, at least as far, I don't know about the curbs, it, that seems like a factual matter. Um, I think one of the challenges that we have as a council is to look for ways to replace the special assessment. It's my understanding that not all communities do it. I could be wrong, but, and when we get federal grants, you can't specially assess. So um, I think over time, we really need to address this problem. We need to go forward and figure out how to do it. Now, just as a reminder, the city's tax rate, because of uh, state legislation, has been absolutely flat. We have been able to make tiny, tiny increases in our overall levy rate and our overall levy, just depending on businesses moving in and out of the community and, and so forth. We can't just raise taxes to get rid of these special assessments. We can't just raise taxes to to fund things that we think that we ought to fund. So I think as a council, it really is a challenge for us to, to look at this and, and see if there is some way that we can make this fair. I, you know, it's just, it, it's just not fair. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I echo some of the same uh, concerns that Alderman Donahue just uh, spoke about. Um, I received uh, a special asset assessment a number of years ago, and uh, I was not on the council at that time. I did call my alderman uh, at, at that point in time. That was Eldenburg, and um, you know, gave him an earful and, and thought, of, you know, there would be a better way to do that. Um, 
uh, in Alderman Donahue, if you remember a number of years ago when Eisner Avenue was uh, redone, there was a special hearing here and there was quite a few people here that spoke. Uh, there was one individual that did speak and uh, they were um, granted immunity from the special assessment at, at that meeting. Um, what, what, what I have a problem with is, is that we've got a wheel tax now. We've, we've may or may not have a garbage fee that would be dedicated to roads in the future. Um, we've, you know, we, we bond for some and, and we do special assessments, but the special assessments are selective. They're not uniform. If there is an area of town where there's block grant money available, we'll resurface that area and they won't be assessed. So it's, it's, it's selective and that's what I have a, a huge problem with. And um, the people that spoke this evening, they had, they had compelling issues. Uh, one of my other problems that I have is with um, this process. The people that came up and spoke tonight, um, they all spoke very eloquently. They all have individual circumstances. Um, they all may be legitimate concerns, but it, after just hearing that, now we're supposed to you know, take under advisement those special circumstances and vote on it right away at this meeting you know, after the hearing without having any um, you know, documentation, written documentation, reviewing things, having it go through the Public Works Committee. Um, I'm, I'm the director of the Public Works Committee as well, so I've, I've had conversations with Director Beeble and made him aware that I, I wasn't a big fan of assessments, but uh, like Alderman Donahue mentioned, um, without having the special assessments, you know, there's, you know, little or, or no roads that are going to be done because, you know, that's where the, the money is generated from. But in the future, I think it needs to be addressed. I think this process needs to be looked at and be a little bit different so that we're not putting aldermen on the spot at, you know, when we have people that come up with hardship in individual cases that, that may or may not be legitimate. Um, and, you know, I, I think there's a better way to do this and, and I'm not, you know, real happy with this process. Thank you for those comments. I'd like to ask Engineer Ryan Sassman to come up and just give us a little bit of a flavor of, you know, we established that there's some curb and gutter that was included in the assessment, but it may not be charged. And you could just explain to us how that's done. I guess the first thing I'd like to do is just give a little bit of history on some of these streets. Like, for instance, Salmon Avenue, the last time that whole section of the street the resurface was between 1972 and 1983, so we've gotten well over 40 years out of the resurfacing process. Uh, the last time South 17th Street was resurfaced between Georgia Avenue and Union Avenue was approximately 1978 from 70, 74 to 78 certain sections were done, so again, it was done well over 40 years ago. And also South 9th Street, the section from Indiana down to Alabama, um, that was done between 72 and 75, that section. So you're looking at, you know, again, well over 40 years. Um, again, to talk a little bit about the assessment process, granted some of, some of these streets, uh, what I would consider such as South 17th Street, uh, uh, a minor collector, and it's almost, it's 48 feet wide, but they're only assessed for a residential street. It's only 36 feet wide. The additional 36 feet from 48, the city picks up 100% of the cost. And how the assessment works with, uh, like for, for instance with the resurfacing, the city picks up 50% of the cost and each homeowner it pays for 25% of the cost. That's, a, that's what their assessment is, $23 per foot for the resurfacing. That's, that's it's a preliminary assessment, but I, f I feel, feel it's fairly close. And again, to talk about the curb and gutter, we all, when we send out the assessment, it's always the worst case scenario is if we're removing all the curb and gutter, like the one gentleman mentioned. We really won't know how much the curb and gutter has to be replaced until we remove the asphalt. And again, it's, it's, it's a mill and fill operation. We'll remove all three, four, five inches of the asphalt, then we'll have a chance to look at the curb and gutter and see exactly what has to be replaced. Sometimes it's only a three, four foot section. Sometimes it is the whole front end, but you really don't know that until, until you remove the, uh, the asphalt. Okay, why don't again, you stay the city up here. picks up 50% of that cost for the, cur for, for the curb and gutter. I appreciate those comments. Let's move on to Alderman Drawn. Thank you, Mayor, appreciate that. This is very pertinent. I had someone today ask me a question and it's regarding traffic that is a little <laughs> heavier than normal. Mm -hmm. He lives on 17th, coming off of Kohler Memorial. A lot of semis go back and forth. 
Is that something that is uh, taken into consideration or moved towards some of the industry that's using that more in terms of how it's proportioned out, or how, how does that figure into it? Uh, you mean like for the assessment, I guess? I'm just right, because if the road is being heavily used, let's say with semis, mm -hmm. and it's a residential road, and they're coming down this road, there's more wear and tear on that section. Will that be, in, in some regards, figured through to the companies that are close to that area? Or is that strictly just if you live there, that's just how it is? Right. No, it's the assessment. Whoever, if you've got frontage on that street, it's going to be your cost. But again, the city, the city looks at a wider street, such as the South 17th or same, and I believe that's 40 or 42, and South 9th Street is 40 or 42 feet wide. Again, we only assess for a residential street, which with our ordinance is 36 feet wide. The city picks up that additional cost. Ryan, could you please explain the, the life of a road? So uh, if, a, if a road is, is redone and it has a 30-year life expectancy uh, and it only lasts 15 years, how do you handle that when you, when you charge assessments the next time? Right. Our, our, <coughs> our concrete streets, when we repave like an Eisner Avenue, that's through our city ordinance, that's, that's guaranteed for 30 years for the homeowner. Our resurfacing like this is through a city ordinance is guaranteed for 15 years. And with these resurfacing projects, we've gotten well in the 20, 25 years for, a, for, the, for the mill and fill. And if for some reason it would fail, then there would be a credit coming back to the, to the homeowner because it didn't, it didn't meet its warranty. But we've never had an a asphalt street not, not meet its 15-year warranty. Thank you. Um, let's see, next is Alderman Donahue. Thank you. Um, when I spoke before, um, I spoke to the general process being unfair. In my opinion, and I, I'm just going to call on, on Attorney Adams, it would also be profoundly unfair for us today to make individual determinations <coughs> as almost as a judicial body, gathering information, gathering evidence, sitting and making decisions. I don't think that's the role of this council. I don't think that we can make, I mean, there's a rule of uniform taxation. Right. So we're not allowed as, as a council to decide this property owner you know, only has to pay $3 a foot, and this property owner only has to pay $2, and this one has to pay 10 Otherwise, I guarantee you that whenever an assessment is done, these chambers will be filled, and we will be here for hours and hours acting as judge and jury in terms of making individual assessments. My overall concern is the assessment process, and is there a better way to do it, and is there something that is, is fairer? So I just, I don't want us to go down the path of making, for the folks who were good enough and, and, and energetic enough to come out and speak, it was three tonight, next time it'll be 30, time after that it'll be 300. I, that's just not what we're here for, I think. So the assessment <coughs> process is, uh, dealt with by state statute. Um, I was actually going to pull up the statute and read some pertinent, pertinent sections, but uh, uh, the internet's not working properly, so I can't reach to the site. Um, but, I, but I can tell you that there is a uniform process that, that you have to follow if you assess. Uh, and there is uniformity in that assessment as well, so you can't, as you've mentioned, you can't pick and choose. Uh, as I think Alderperson Bellinger pointed out, there was an issue on Eisner uh, Avenue, uh, and, the co and the council did end up approving uh, an individual to not pay as much, but that actually was also the result of a, a court action. Um, and the court interpreted the, uh, um, the statute uh, on uh, assessments in a particular way, and the city followed uh, that court interpretation. Uh, so there are there may be opportunities uh, d to deal with it in that regard, but in general, uh, the statute is pretty clear that uh, absent very specific exceptions, which I'm not aware apply in any of these circumstances, uh, um, we have to apply it uniformly. And city attorney, I don't believe in that case on Eisner Avenue, the um, assessment was dispatched. I think it's still on the property, and when it's developed, then it will be incurred. Right. So it's, it's still there, but it's just been delayed because the property is undeveloped and has some special uh, designation. Special which, characteristics. Yeah, that's correct. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I've got a couple things. First, <laughs> I'd like to correct the record um, for uh, Attorney Adams and, and yourself, Mayor. Uh, that one property was joint <laughs> owned between uh, Webster's and uh, Godsack, or uh, <coughs> I can't think of what, what the other name was of the, of the property. It was a wetland area, it was a low area, 
and you are correct, um, it was um, deemed at the po one point in time unbuildable, and so it was adjusted. There was another homeowner further to the north on the corner. I believe she was handicapped, and they had a handicapped or developing disabled child. Um, and the way that that, that that corner was redone, um, they, their assessment was waived, completely waived. So that did happen. So if you go back and look, that, that is the case. And then my, my other question would be then to Alderman Donahue, um, I'm not sure uh, what her intent is if we're not going to, um, this body shouldn't you know, adjudicate these individual circumstances at this point in time, are we going to file or put hold all of these, um, you know, un until such time we get more documentation and, and, and we have a chance to look at it or, or how are we gonna proceed with this if, if that, I'm just Alderman, wondering what your intent is. Alderman Donahue. Uh, my intent is that we need to pass these assessments tonight. Um, it is not the role of this legislative body to act in a ju judicial kind of capacity. <coughs> If we were going to do that, I think we would have to give notice to each and every property owner that he or she or they could come in for a hearing before this body acting as a judicial body. And at that hearing, they could be represented by counsel, they could call witnesses, they could present evidence. And for those of you who have participated in such activities, you know that one hearing, of course, would take a substantial period of time. So I don't think legally we can make any individual adjustments tonight. I would certainly defer to, to Attorney Adams on that. My, my concern is the process as a whole. I don't think special assessments as a whole are fair. And I, I think probably most of us would probably agree with that. It's just there's no other money at this point. So as we are going forward, you know, we're looking at potentially getting rid of the garbage fee, potentially doing this, potentially doing that. We just need to remember that the reason we do special assessments is because that's the money that we use to make these road repairs in part. The city pays in part and property owners pay in part. And I'm just saying overall that's not fair. What would be profoundly unfair is if tonight we made these individual adjustments to people who, who came out because then I, I can foresee a circumstance in which we would have to come back and look at all of these special assessments, as I say, provide procedural due process to these folks who are also <coughs> likewise affected and didn't know that they could come in and, and make a case. And, and we, I don't think we're capable of doing that tonight. And it's just not our role. I would defer to Attorney Adams though. Attorney Adams, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, it, it, yeah the same, same thing I said before. In, in essence, there, you, you have to follow the statute if you're gonna do assessments. There are some provisions in the statute where you treat people differently than uniformly, and I, as far as I'm aware and from what I've heard tonight, none of those meet those circumstances. Uh, Director Beeble, did you want to offer any other comments? And while David's coming up, uh, Alderman Bellinger, thanks for pointing out that there were two different parcels. With, I thought we were talking about one and not two different ones. <coughs> Go ahead, David. Thank you. Yeah, I just, special assessments have been part of, I guess, our procedures and policies for street and road construction for the last 40 some plus years. Uh, it, what we've done over the years is tried to tweak that process to make it as fair <coughs> as possible for the residents. So a lot of the concerns about, I'm on a busy street, the trucks are pounding on it, we take that into consideration and then the assessment that is handed down is the same as would be a 36 foot wide street that's in a residential area with maybe two blocks long with hardly any traffic or any industry or any trucks ever going down that street. So that, that's a factor. The other thing is we've had multiple letters that have gone out to the, all the property owners. We actually had Prior to even the assessments going out, we had a preliminary pre-construction notification, come on down, open houses, where Department of Public Works and our engineering staff, we would hold neighborhood meetings with the residents to give them an alert, let them know what the projects are, what, what, what the project entails. Then the preliminary assessments go out by state statute, part of the procedures with this. So that gives them an opportunity as well then 
to see this is what the potential cost is. We now have the bids. So now we send out the assessments with the actual bid figures in. And as we mentioned, those preliminary assessments, we, we tend to err on the high side so that when we do actually get the figures in, it's in the residents' favor, in other words. It's a lower cost than with the initial. You also, we talked about curb and gutter. Curb and gutter, again, we estimate everything's coming out. In many cases, that's not the case. In a lot of cases, the curb and gutter is perfect. We mill off the asphalt. In some <coughs> cases, we don't have to touch the curb. It can remain as is. Again, overall lowering the overall outflow, out, outflow of money from the resident. But as part of our our process, we've talked about getting uh, back into what are we going to do with the state of the city of the roads. We've got to get fixed. We've got to do something. This is th the first step along that process. Tonight we have on, our, on the agenda a $1.6 million pr contract to begin that process. And the special assessments are key to that. If the special assessments this evening don't get passed and get delayed, we don't get to do the contract either. So they go hand in hand, and all we're asking is just be aware of that when you're making your decisions this evening. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Alderman Bellinger? Thank you, Mayor. Um, last time when we did Eisner Avenue, we did adjudicate that one individual, and we did relieve them of their obligation to pay. So the body does, does do that. <laughs> You know, whether they should do that or they shouldn't do that, I'm not going to argue that legal point because uh, I'm not qualified to. I don't have that, that background. But what I'm concerned about is, is that we, we post this in the minutes. We, we send out notices. We make the residents aware. We, we send out assessments. We have a hearing, and then they come to the hearing, and we can't do anything for them or do anything about it. So... Is it an act of futility to, you know, to even go through this process? And are these people just wasting their time? Um, you know, I, I just, I have a problem with it. I, I, I get, you know, that we need to do assessments. I get that we need to, you know, get the contract. I get, but there's got to be a way for individuals to address and have the body hear it and take it seriously and, and look at it in some way, shape, or form. Um, and, you know, to Alderman Donahue's point that, you know, we can't, you know, say, you know, Joe Smith down the street, you know, he's at $45 a foot, you know, and Sue, you know, Jones is at $32. You know, I get that, that we can't do that. But there's got to be a way that these people can be heard and you know, their concerns, you know, that they're taken seriously and, that, you know, that they're valid and or not and that the bo this body considers that and, and moves forward. So I just think, you know, just going through because we can't, we can't, you know, take it, you know, their points, you know, because we have to run this through today. You know, I, I just think the process to me is goofy and it needs to, it needs to be, there needs to be a better process with the hearing, you know, with the time frame and with approving and in how these individual cases are adjudicated in my opinion and you know, some of these people have legitimate, you know, concerns and, you know, just to, to blow it off and, and not take it into account, I guess. I, I guess I have a problem with that. So um, I just want to make that, that clear. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? Alderman Lassard. Thank you. Does this have to be passed tonight? Is it apt? Are we starting the roads tomorrow morning? I mean, do we have to pass it David? Today? Yeah, in, in order to prove the contract to start construction, we need we need to have action this evening. And when do you have to approve the contract? Uh, tonight, tonight. I mean, the, the contract has already been, we had bids about a month ago. We received the bids, and that's why we're having, yes, we're having the, the hearings this evening as well as the imp uh, approval of the contract on the Common Council. Now, we, we had... Probably close to, with all the projects between South 17th Street, Saman Avenue, 6th Street, 9th Street, George Avenue, and Kentucky Avenue, probably over 300 special assessments were out. And this evening, out of the hearing, we've had four show up and speak. So I, yeah, I understand they have specialized individual concerns, but... but 
so the the point the point the point being is that the point being is that we 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 had we've had multiple meetings. Who, we've who's attended your multiple meetings? We've we, we've had residents from 17th Street. We've had different. We've had about four different meetings. One for South 17th Street. We had a meeting for Sixth Street. We had a meeting for Salmon Avenue. Different meetings specifically for those residents on those streets to come in, look at the project. We could sit down with our staff, talk about the process of the construction, talk about the assessments, talk about how this process works. So back to my question as to you have to have the contract signed with the with whoever you're having do this work. What is there a deadline on there, that? There is. The, the, bids, the bids are only available to be held for 60 days. Oh, After okay. 60 days, then the bids become null and void, and we have to go out for new bids. And could you tell me when those bids expire? In July. Yeah, in July here. So it doesn't have to be approved tonight? Well, the next meeting. July what? Mid-July. Mid okay, so our next council meeting, we'd still have enough time, would we not? Potentially. I'm not going to vote in favor of this this evening until I get some more information. So our, our next meeting would be on um, July 5th. Does that still meet your calendar? Well, with the contract, we mailed out to the contractor for the resurfacing. Technically, he has he can start July 1st with the, with the, with this contract. So we, we gave him we gave this contractor whoever whoever got the bids in the specs it was from July 1st to October 7th. You have that window to get this work done. So if we'd pull this contract back, before, not approved before July 1st, we would have to rebid it because we're not we're not following the specs that we bid we, we bid the project at. You just told me that we have 90 days to approve the bid. And that 90 days up is July 15th. No, 60 days. Do you have anything to add, Chuck? No, everything's covered. Here. Okay. But the way... 60 days to approve it. And then 60 days is up July... When we, when we bid out the project, we don't necessarily always have 60 days between awarding the contract and letting the contractor start. With this contract, we bid it out. We told the contractor, you can start this project anywhere between July 1st, and it's got to be done by October 7th. So if we don't approve the contract, we would have to rebid it because we would not be following our, our specs we sent out. We told the contractor he can start by July 1st. So if he comes in and says, well, I want to start July 1st, and we don't approve this now until July 5th, we're not, we're not following our, our specifications that we, that, that we, that we bid out. And you're sorry. City Attorney. So a couple of things to remember. Um, the question was asked, well, why do we even bother to have these hearings? Is there anything that we can do about this? And the purpose of the hearings isn't, I, I think we're getting mixed up that there's really two issues going on here. The purpose of the hearing is for the overall assessment. So you had a hearing on the entire project of Salmon Avenue from Calumet to North 21st. You had a hearing on the entire project of Kentucky Avenue from South Ace to South 9th Street. So now what you can do is either approve that project or disapprove of that project by voting on, on each of those items. Sure. Now what we're, the, the questions seem to be more revolving around the individuals and whether there's something that we can do for the individual as opposed to the whole group as a whole. Is there a way to let one particular property owner get a break as opposed to all of the others. That you can't do uh, at this point. Um, there is some uniformity requirements. Uh, and again, uh, it, it's, it's built in uh, to the statute and we have to follow the statute. The individuals do have yeah. some ability, even after today, um, to, to contest this, but they'll have to contest it as individuals after today. What you're voting on tonight is on a project as a whole not and, and if you postpone it two weeks you're still only going to be voting on the project as a whole you will not be voting on let's allow neighbor a to get ten you know a thousand dollars cut off of his and let's let neighbor b get 500 uh, dropped off of hers thank you for that explanation uh, going on to conversations or uh alderman donahue uh, actually, uh, uh, Attorney Adams, I think, has made the point that we need to make. And I would just suggest, because our uh, citizens, our constituents are very interested in getting road projects going, that we 
vote tonight, approve these, get the ball rolling, and then to whatever extent there are various appeal rights and so forth, um, individuals um, who came tonight should be, feel free to, to contact Attorney Adams for further information. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Damro. I just have a question. This gentleman spoke and, and was the original meeting, or was the original, it was supposed to be May 5th and it was pushed till now? Or was it? I'll ask the city clerk to explain that. I think maybe our finance director could maybe explain it more. Nancy, would you please step forward? All I really want to know is if the letter was sent out for May 5th and then pushed till now. When the original letters were mailed out, they were mailed out with the wrong date. And we did notice it and we sent out new letters and that's why the hearing was tonight. And when did they get those letters? Um, <coughs> more than the 10 days ago. Right. right, we mailed them by, um, okay, June 6th. And then when you guys hold the meetings for everybody to show up and meet with everybody, what time are those supposed to be at? Those were prior to the mailings. What time do they show up for that meeting? What time are they set for? They set for I mean, I mean, what time do the people show up? David needs to sit down. So the meetings that they set down to you at? Just Michael. Go ahead, Mike. The meetings that they set down to you at are set for 4 to 5, 4 to 5.30? Okay, this, in, in April, in, in mid-April and early May, we had four separate meetings, one strictly for the South 9th Street area. I'm just asking what time. Um, we, we had them from 4 till 5.30. So people that work like till five, how do they show up at the meetings? Well, my information, my information is on there. My email, my my phone number. I but mean, it's there's all. There's but it's all, a meeting. Pardon me. But it's a meeting, and probably we're in a working community. So if people show up for a meeting, a lot of stuff is scheduled like for four o'clock, three thirty, three o'clock. People work till five. They go home, feed their kids. Why can't it be at six o'clock? This meeting's not at four o'clock in the afternoon. It's at six. Right, we could, we, there's, there's no question we could extend yeah, our public informational meetings till 6 o'clock. People speak like they want to and actually be able to show up because that would be really nice. Thank you, Alderman Damro. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, there's a process when we get our property tax bills. Uh, I think it's, what is it called, open book, where we get a chance to appear before that group and uh, make our case why our assessment should be should be changed. Uh, Attorney Adams, is there, do you know of any other communities how they handle this? What would be a mechanism where we could handle these individual, these individual situations like these people had tonight before it gets to us? And then have that committee maybe make a recommendation to us? Because I, I, you know, with, with what Alderman Donahue said, uh, you know, we may not be in a legal position to make these individual choices at, here is there another mechanism we could use like an open book for these assessment type things before they get to the council? Well, so these additional meetings that were held, they are not required by statute. So there are additional, um, it's basically the city has imposed upon itself an additional uh, requirement that, that we do uh, these meetings. Um, what do other communities do? Well, as, as has been mentioned, not all communities specially assess for, for roads. Some should choose to do it in other ways. As far as what do other communities do as far as sort of informal meetings, I, I can't tell you that. I know there are some communities that just follow the statute and don't do additional meetings. I suspect that some of those are much smaller communities, you know, where, where there's probably more likely to be one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, commentary. The community I worked in prior to coming to Sheboygan that's how it was that's how it was done but in a community of it was listed as 10,000 but since a good portion of those are prison inmates you know it's really a, a community of 5,000 um, a little easier for that one-on-one -on -one communication um, other other methods it, it really is it's it's open to your creativity if there are better ways to meet with people one-on-one -on -one than opening it up to a meeting and and then also sending out a letter inviting people to either the meeting or to contact uh, the city engineer and providing you know all of his contact information, we could do that. City Thank Attorney, you. earlier you mentioned something about a process where they could come in and, and uh, question these after the fact. 
There, there is an appeal process for special assessments, yes. Okay, Chapter thank 66. you. Thank you. Alderman Bourne. I was just going to follow up, Mayor. Uh, <coughs> if, if we wanted to bring this up as a, as a discussion, what committee would be appropriate to come up with another, another mechanism sim similar to the open book? Would that be something that would <coughs> be discussed by the Public Works, Department, uh, Public Works Committee, the Finance Committee? I think we should have that discussion to see if there is another mechanism uh, similar to open book that these people can go before they come here and let those let that committee make a recommendation to us on these individual cases if there are some. Well, I would think, you know, uh, David and Ryan are the ones that have really been working this program and I think we should depend on public works to have that first discussion. Um, Alderman, that's it. Any, any other discussion? Alderman Lassard? My question, is, and maybe someone can give me clarity, is they sent out the letters, people attended those meetings or not. We have the hearings here. They speak out. The purpose of them speaking out to us is what? We can't do anything about it, so why are they speaking out to us? What is the purpose of that hearing? I can't help them in this body because we can't, as as Alder um, Donahue said, we can't pick and choose who pays what to whom. We can't do that. It, it's not a legal form to do it. So I, I, would, I personally, if I'm getting assessed and I see that there's a hearing and I can come in here and speak, I'm probably expecting my committee or my, my council to do something about it. We are telling them very loudly, unless I'm misunderstanding what's being said, we're having a hearing. We'll be happy to hear what you have to say. We're going to do absolutely nothing about it. Anything Except else? We do have the right now. We found out that you can appeal that decision through our <coughs> city attorney or our lawyer or whatever they do. City attorney? Again, you do have an option. <coughs> Remember that the hearings are about the project as a whole. The hearings are not about the individual circumstances. So the, ind the people who are coming in are speaking either <coughs> in favor of or against the project as a whole. If you feel that they've provided sufficient information that you don't think that project as a whole should go ahead, your option is to vote against it, to say we're not going to do that proje project. When your vote on this and the purpose of the hearing is, is based on the projects, not the individual circumstances. There's a separate process called Appeal of Special Assessments, and it's in section 66.0703 of the statutes. That determines the, the individual special assessments if people feel that individually, not the project as a whole, if they are okay with the project as a whole, but feel that they've been treated unfairly as opposed to their other neighbors, that's the process that they would use. With that being said, our job is if we want these streets repaired, that's our choice, yes or no. That's the only thing this body's deciding is we want the street repaired. When they're in a hearing, I guess my question to the four people that spoke is, we want your streets repaired. I'm not asking for an answer. I guess I am open. Can, may yeah, I? I would like I have to get up. Answer your question, but That's I would like to question. repair paid for by the 12 million people We've got to have a vote to open up the mm -hmm. public. Got to, right vote now, got to have a motion. Alderman Lassard, if you're going to continue this discussion, we need to have a motion to open the floor. I would just like to ask the question, and it's been answered. Our job as councilman is to decide whether or not we want these roads repaired. That's correct. That's our only job. Correct. The rest is up to the different methods they have to approach the city and make contention if they have it. Correct. And I'm totally understanding that. Alderman Jose. Well, I think that the purpose of the hearing, when the legislature made it a requirement that we have hearings of this type, it couldn't have been for a redundant purpose to just hear people talk. So I reject the, uh, <coughs> I reject the idea that we can't make special exceptions like was done with the woman on Eisner Avenue, first of all. Second of all, if you're telling me that all we can do is vote yes or no, then 100% of the people here that have responded at this hearing, 100% of the constituents of this city that responded to this hearing, 
said they don't want to be assessed. And zero people said they wanted to be assessed. Therefore, I'm voting against it. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion on the motion? Alderman Bellinger. For Attorney Adams, I'm, um, so the reason for a hearing is to have the total scope of each of these individual projects looked at. So wouldn't a hearing have the city engineer and the director of public works and go through the whole scope and wouldn't it be like an internal kind of thing rather than invite public unless the public is only going to speak on the total scope? And if so, are the, are the public that comes here to speak told ahead of time that they can only speak on the total scope of the project, not their individual circumstance, and that there is a process for remediation or um, appeals for their individual circumstance? I'm just wondering, how is the public, how is that information communicated to the public, and why did we, you know, why does it get to this point where, you know, we've got people that obviously spent a lot of time putting together um, their case and coming before this body and, you know, stating their individual case, and, and why wasn't that just ruled out of order, you know, before it even happened? I'm just curious. Well, first of all, to answer your last question first, the reason it wouldn't be ruled out of order is because it is a, is a public hearing. People are able to speak at a public hearing, and even if they're not speaking entirely germane to the circumstance, okay. they're permitted to speak. And uh, it is fair to say that individual circumstances can have an impact on the project as a whole. So you may have people coming in and saying, all of us neighbors, you know, we, we have a problem with this. We can't afford it. It's too expensive. We don't think the project uh, was done properly or, you know, we don't, we don't think that this street should be paved. We want a cracked street because it'll slow, um, slow people down on on their street. That was my opinion when they assessed me when I lived on North 9th Street. I would have rather had a bad street. But it is still focused on the project as a whole, and that's what the statute says. Now, as far as what does the letter say to explain to them, it, it's a letter. So we're not sending them a seven-page book explaining every detail of, of, of the entire statute. They're simply being told, you have the right to come and appear and, and to speak to it. Uh, once, once that's completed, uh, they certainly do have that opportunity then to take the step individually. Um, the statutes do separate that out. There's sections on the assessments, there's sections on the hearings, and then there's sections on the appeal of the individual assessments. Uh, and so I think the legislature laid it out fairly clearly how the process is to work. I think one of the, one of the reasons why there's probably some uh, uh, confusion question about this is we haven't done this in, in quite some time. It used to be our regular practice to do this. It hasn't been done in a while, and it's, uh, I think the public, is, it's, it's a new thing again uh, for them. But that is how the, the statute does work. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion from the body? Seeing none. Um, 8.1 is before us. All those in favor of 8.1, please signify by saying aye. No, oh, the clerk tells me we need to do roll calls. It's because of the conversation. <laughs> Please vote uh, on 8.1. Sorry. The motion is to pass the resolution. Nobody's done it. The, very, the voting has already started. We're voting right now. I'm sorry, we can't have any other discussion. Rosemary. Nine eyes, five no's on the first one. Motion passes. Item 8.2 is resolution number 23 of 1617 by Alderman Donahue and Jose confirming the exercise of police power and making an assessment for those benefited properties against which the assessments are proposed for the resurfing of Kentucky Avenue from South A Street to South 9th Street. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I would move to put the resolution upon its passage. 
Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion. <coughs> Seeing no discussion, we'll please call the roll. Eleven eyes, three no's. Motion passes. Item 8.3 is resolution number 24 of 1617 by Alderman Donahue and Jose Herman and Bitters confirming the exercise of police power for making an assessment for those benefited properties against um, which assessments are proposed for resurfacing Georgia Avenue from South 8th Street to South 9th Street. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to uh, put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes, four no's. Motion passes. 8.4 is a resolution number 25 of 1617 by Alderman Donahue, Jose Herman, and Bitters confirming the exercise of police power and making an assessment for those benefited properties against which assessments are proposed for resurfacing South 9th Street from Indiana Avenue to Georgia Avenue. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Uh, under discussion, Alderman Jose. I'm going to make a motion to exempt Dave Rapinski from the assessment. Is there a second? Motion dies for lack of a second. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eight eyes, six no's. Motion passes. Item 8.5 is resolution number 26 of 1617 by Alderman Theo Lewandowski, Bitters, and Herman confirming the exercise of police power and making an assessment for those benefited properties against which assessments are proposed for resurfacing South 17th Street from 120, 120 feet south of Arizona Avenue to Maryland Avenue. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for uh, the motion and support under discussion. Seeing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? Eight eyes, six no's. Motion passes. Item 8.6 is resolution number 27 of 1617 by Alderman Bitters, officially recognizing the Indiana Avenue Corridor Neighborhood Association. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to put this controversial resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. And we welcome the new Neighborhood Association into the Mayor's Neighborhood Leadership Cabinet. Uh, move on to 8.7, which is an RC number 45 of 1617 by Public Works, to whom is referred RO number 39 of 1617 by the purchasing agent submitting bids for the resurfacing program and resolution number 17 of 1617 by Alderman Bellinger authorizing entering into a contract for the 2016 bituminous resurfacing program and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and adapt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion. Seeing no discussion, would the clerk please call the roll? Three 
13 ayes, one no. Motion passes. Item 8.8 .8 is general ordinance number three of 1617 by Alderman Donahue, Lewandowski, and Wolf amending section 82-33 of the municipal code as to change the number of community service officers from two full-time positions to one full-time position and an additional part-time community service officers in the police department's table of organization. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to uh, put the ordinance upon his passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll. Thirteen eyes, one no. Motion passes. Item 8.9 is general ordinance number 4 of 1617 by Alderman Donahue, Lewandowski, and Wolf amending section 8233 of the municipal code as to delete one maintenance worker three tree trimmer and add a maintenance worker three arborist position to the Department of Public Works table of organization. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to uh, put the ordinance upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion. Seeing no discussion, would the clerk please call the roll. Fourteen eyes. Motion passes. For other matters, return to the city attorney. 9.1 uh, is a resolution to rescind general ordinance number 11516, reducing the number of Sheboygan alder persons from 16 to 10, and instead hold a binding referendum to allow the citizens of Sheboygan to vote on this. That will be referred to law and licensing. 9.2 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2016. June 30, 2017, and June 30, 2018. That will also be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. Uh, next is a contemplated closed session. Alderman Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move um, to convene in closed session pursuant to Section 1985, Sub 1, Sub E of the Wisconsin Statutes, where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session related to redevelopment opportunities in the 600 block of North 8th Street, Indiana Avenue corridor. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Uh, would the clerk please call the roll for a closed session? Fourteen eyes. Motion passes. Just want to let our viewers at home know that we'll uh, adjourn in closed session. So this will be the end of our broadcast for the evening. We'll adjourn uh, till 8 o'clock.